creature. If the Lord of Sanctuary never built it, he should be shut down. Who built it and why? When it was in its heyday, it was a very brightly painted image, painted in comic book colors. The riddles of the Sphinx have puzzled all who have laid eyes on it. Temple of the Body. <coughs> KFC. I wonder. It's a full frontal urban assault. Before it's too late, two teams of scientists and builders are tackling the age-old riddles of the Sphinx. Oh, not this guy. Zahi Hawass, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, is the official guardian of the Sphinx. This guy's full of perversion and lies. <clears throat> he knows from the geology that it was carved right out of the earth. So why does the bottom appear to be built out of stone blocks like the pyramids? Hawass investigates the size and style of the blocks for answers. He's telling the truth right here, though. If you look at the two poles of the thing, this is a typical... Small stone that the Romans kind of to be seen came and they did add this to the Sphinx. Just between the Sphinx's paws, Zahi Hawass finds blocks from four this different is very important. Periods. This is 30 BC, 1550 BC, and this is 2600 BC. Sure, more like 11. Five. Have been covering the Sphinx in blocks for thousands of years. B five thousand BC. But why? Two. Eleven. The answer can be found in a deadly hidden force attacking the limestone of the body of the Sphinx and the surrounding ditch. All of this was once the floor of a sea. It was a seabed. The rises, it seeps through the rock, drawing the salt to the surface, where it crystallizes and expands. The results are disastrous. Kind of like dead same. skin. I hate to do this, but it's happening naturally all the time. On this wall next to the sphinx, the flakes fall and crumble. This is what was happening to the sphinx. All right, it's time to repair it. Stop touching it. <clears throat> As God made us from the dust. Genesis 1. The blocks put there by Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans were to protect and conceal its deteriorating body, especially the more vulnerable parts carved from soft limestone. But while the soft stone is bad news for the Sphinx... So it used to be a, like a step pyramid going up to the... Because to you're supposed to build your body up, build the body of Christ. As he instructed us. Now I am working on the foot of the back leg. I am sculpting the paw and the thigh. He makes quick progress because the stone is so The location of the Sphinx undoubtedly links it to the pyramids. Whoever built the pyramids likely built the Sphinx. The problem is, the Sphinx appears to sit right between two pyramids built by two different pharaohs. That's right. <coughs> the first and largest pyramid was built by Pharaoh Khufu, who reigned around 2,500 Khufu! Egyptologist believes the head of the Sphinx represents the pharaoh who built it. 
Yes, sir. So Shalomon compares the face of the state first. to the face of the pharaohs in hopes of revealing its true identity. I remember when the statue was built, he turns to the only... The problem is, the sphinx appears to sit right between two pyramids built by two different pharaohs. They're called the Three Kings. The first and largest pyramid was built by Pharaoh Khufu, who reigned around 2500 BC. His son, Khafre, built the second slightly smaller. His son, huh? Reiner Stavl. And the third one, it was his son. The head of the sphinx represents the pharaoh who built it. So Shalman compares the face of the sphinx to the face of the pharaohs in hopes of revealing its true identity. I remember when the statue was built. He turns to the only undisputed portrait of Khufu ever found. A small ivory statuette. And this piece is something extraordinary. And I'm so excited. The only piece here. It has not been removed from its glass home in the Cairo Museum for 30 years. It is something uh, I would not have believed that we are allowed to do this. And this statue is a real masterpiece. Whoa. Everything is very finely sculptured, so detailed that one can compare the statue with the enormous sphinx. First pharaoh. Uh, the face is, for me, the same face. This is before they're Egyptians. Square face, a little bit thicker mouth, uh, the eyes are protruding. But there's also a less subjective clue. Unlike his son Khafre, the builder of the second pyramid, does not have a beard. The statue does not wear a Man beard. with that. So I am quite sure the Sphinx, which has no beard at all, is the picture of Khufu. But Mark Lehner finds evidence that the Sphinx originally had a beard. And he believes the face of the Sphinx is the sun, Khafre. An original beard would explain this very enigmatic bump on the Sphinx's chest. It starts right about here, and it's just right in position to support the long beard. The debate rages on. And I think the beard was original. The father, Khufu, or his son, Khafre. We don't know. The Sphinx's identity crisis cannot be resolved by facial features alone. See, as you look, those are the cornerstones. You can see a face on each side. There's the bowl. Nostrils, mouth, eyes, eye. Black Pharaoh. The Sphinx is the face of Egypt, an icon of its age-old mysteries. <laughs> but what did it mean to the? Pretty close. The ancient Egyptians. The old kingdom collapses, and the Giza Plateau becomes an abandoned cemetery. The Sphinx and pyramids neglected. Nearly a thousand years pass, and the power of the pharaohs rises again in a period called the New Kingdom, beginning about 1500 BC. But centuries of wind and water have eroded the Sphinx's fragile body, and desert sands have swallowed the Sphinx up to its neck. Next is written in hieroglyphs on a gigantic Very important. 15 ton granite stela perched between its paws. 
The inscription tells of a hero who rescues the Sphinx. A young prince clears away the sands, and the Sphinx rewards him by making him king. His name Moses. is Tutmosis. Moses. Ah, that guy was a fighter. A warrior. Remember, Moses <coughs> had to flee from Egypt. Same with Jesus and uh, was it Matthew? Because King Herod wanted to kill all the firstborn. For Moses. All right, this right here represents the pyramid or the cornerstone. Also represents uh, Earth, as the man stands right here. This represents the sparrow, or the uh, or the eagle. Doesn't represent what she says. Uh, what did she say? Uh, Hieroglyphs is the easiest thing to read. <laughs> you can see there's something that looks like a bird there. That's actually the sign of the falcon. That's falcon. <laughs> this right here represents the kingdom. This right here, the hornet. Tree life. Uh, the uh, the green eye. That thing called. Ah, can't remember. Horus, depicted as a falcon, is one of the oldest and most important deities in the Egyptian pantheon. It's an eagle. Egyptians believed that the pharaoh was Horus. Falcon. Do they look like a falcon to you or an eagle? <laughs> Even the Germans knew it. They put had the German eagle. <laughs> so dumb. Sun disk. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, this represents ah, what's that thing called? When the falcon and octet hieroglyphs right about that. They form Horus on the horizon. The name of an Egyptian god. How does it say Horus? This is the identity of the Sphinx. Horus didn't even exist. Horus. Horus is the moon god. It's more like Ra. Tutmosis, by clearing away the sands, was not just saving the Sphinx. He was saving a god. And he does more. Horus is a woman, I think. Close inspection of the face of the Sphinx reveals traces of blue paint still clinging to Purple. Him. Color of the earth. We're used to seeing the Sphinx as this beige colored monument out in the desert. But when it was in its heyday, reborn in the new kingdom, it was a very brightly painted image, painted in comic book colors. Mystery. The ruins of the temple sit just 10 yards in front of the paws of the Sphinx. We know from other temples. There, Laner finds a series of mysterious pillars. They look a little bit like Stonehenge. There are 24 of these pillars. There are the 24 elders. They are linked to the 24 hours of the day. <laughs> it seems to have been a very early 
It's only 12 hours in a day. 12 hours a night. As Jesus quoted. As it is written. Isn't God our pottery maker? During the spring and fall equinox, the two days of the year when day and night are in perfect balance, the sun forms a line between the east and west sanctuaries of the temple. As the Sphinx and beyond to one of the great pyramids. These two niches line up Cross. At a point striking right over the Sphinx's shoulder. And this is where the sun sets at the equinoxes. When it sets, it's because Moses is one of the kings. The sun connects the Sphinx temple to the pyramid of Khafre. The three kings, when they're when they come back. There's the Himalaya thing. Temple of the body. The pyramid and the sphinx did as much to build Egypt as the Egyptians did to build them. Building the pyramids and the sphinx actually built Egypt. And the clues to solving the riddle of the sphinx were Now my next video I'll show you the inscription saying a star will be shining. A star is born. A star of Bethlehem, a star of David. It's written all over the walls. And they are linked to Orion's belt. There's Nibiru. The eagle. Mm-hmm. <laughs>